Hello, it's so nice to see you again. If you are new, welcome to my channel. I'm Noreen Burke and this is The Crafty Organizer where I love bringing you ideas on ways to get organized, declutter, do upcycles, DIYs, basically anything crafty. One of the things I get comments for the most are my boxes. I love my boxes. I looked up a Pinterest idea and I ran with duplicating it as closely as I could. Now, most of these were bought from Ikea, but a lot of them I have been able to replicate using everyday boxes. So I want to share some amazing upcycled storage ideas that you can do with cardboard for your storage. Let's get started. Now I know most of us over this last year resorted to having things shipped to your house a lot more. So you might already have some great storage boxes that you've been stashing aside, flattening for recycling someday, or maybe you have a friend or family member who goes to Costco or Sam's Club and gets the large bulk items and those boxes are gold when it comes to storage. Before we get started on that first storage idea, I just want to share a little milestone I just reached, which is this video is my 200th video on YouTube. It's super exciting. I got a little certificate of yay. So I wanted to share it with you and say thank you for coming along. Now, one of the first storage boxes I want to talk about are when you buy a case of paper. For those paper reams, those storage boxes are phenomenal. The reason is, is they are ridiculously sturdy. They use some industrial glue on those because those reams of paper are about 40 pounds. So think of what you can store inside of those. And here's the thing I love the most. If you have one of those cubby storage bookcases, these fit perfectly in the 13 by 13 cubes. Think of how you can customize this to fit in your space and not have to spend anything other than what you choose to cover it with. The next thing I want to talk about is shoe boxes. Now, when I did my Totally Tiffany dupe, I had suggested that you could easily duplicate that look by just getting some similarly sized boxes. Check with some of your larger department stores or bigger shoe chain stores. Most of the time they are throwing these boxes away. See if you can get some that are similarly sized. This really gives a nice way to unify your storage, but if you don't get the same sizes, use them as stacking boxes. This allows you to really get creative. Now, if you don't have these larger style boxes around or you don't want to deal with having to track down shoe boxes, how about the boxes that your food is coming in? There are tons of great ideas. I love the idea of stacking these all together so that you can make storage that's unique for you. You could also make magazine holders, incoming file holders. You can cut the boxes in half and make them for drawer dividers, which I love. You can really make these look so beautiful. I think this one is my favorite storage wise. I love the idea of finding smaller boxes that fit inside of a larger box. In this case, that larger box is super sturdy so you could actually stack one or two on top of it. By using those label holders on the side and they left it as the cereal boxes so that you could see, but I think it's kind of cute just as the cereal boxes, but you could label every single one of those and have specific things inside. Boxes like this are usually 12 inches, so imagine breaking down your vinyl, or your dies, or stamps, or your mail, or cards. There are so many ideas that you could do with this one. This particular idea is genius. Now here's some random ideas with all types of other boxes. The very first one that I saw was on one of those card making sites and I thought it was cute, but it wasn't made out of a box. But then I found several that were and look at how cute these little suitcases are. This is the one that was made from cardstock, but this is an actual shoe box, which is cute. Here's another one, again, just a shoe box and they start looking more and more elevated. Look at this one. Now this is a very specific box. It has a little recessed area inside so when the box is closed, when that lid is on top, it's completely flush. I want to make this one. If you want to see how I can do this, leave me a comment. I don't want to make it if you guys aren't interested. I'll just do it for myself. But if you want to see how to duplicate these stacking suitcases, leave me a comment before because I absolutely want to make this one. 
but any type of box can absolutely be upcycled and really match the style that you have in your home. The other thing I like is by taking some boxes that are the same size, you can create something that looks store-bought. Look at these banker boxes. They spray painted each one a base coat and then they got creative with some spray paint and creative masking and with one coat on top of the gold spray paint, they were able to create these high-end looking Kate Spade-esque boxes. I love this and all they had to invest in was a little bit of time in spray paint. Here's another example where they painted them white first and then they got some fabric and just Mod Podged on top. The great thing about using Mod Podge is once it dries, that's when you can cut the fabric down and you get a really crisp edge and it's so much easier to cut once that Mod Podge is dried because the fabric is stiff. That allows you to take an X-Acto knife and get a really clean cut right around those handles. A beautiful look and again, the two types of fabric really make it match the look of your room. These are great in a bathroom, in a kitchen, a kid's room. And don't forget the importance of handles. That will really make it look more elevated again and specific to your aesthetic. These next couple looks are very elevated and I don't even know how they did some of them. This first one, someone somehow took rolled up papers and I don't know how they got them so specifically done. I don't know if they used a straw or what but then they place them all along the outsides. I think this is just beautiful. And then they were able to add on a handle as well. Just, this is a really cool look. Here's another one of those larger boxes. And with all of these twigs and some twine, I would never have thought that this was a covered box. I would have expected this was a high-end thing that they purchased from a store. Here is another one that I most definitely want to duplicate. This is from So Lovely Creations, and she just took a basic cardboard box. She took the wood shims that you use to level out some furniture or a door when you're installing it by using some paint techniques and then putting a small chalkboard on the front. She was able to create this beautiful high-end box that I absolutely want to duplicate and put in my home. Let me know if you want to see how that one's made too or just go directly to her channel and check it out. I have a link to lots of these below. If I was able to find the source for it, I put a link to the description below, but a lot of these were just pictures from Pinterest and they're not very good about listing the original source. So if you know where one of these came from and I didn't list it, please let me know. I always wanna make sure to give proper credit to the people who came up with these amazing ideas. What's most exciting about upcycling storage like this is you can wait until you find the size that you need, you can individually decide what goes inside and customize boxes that fit inside. And that way when you pull things out, everything still looks cohesive and uniform. There are a multitude of ways to cover these boxes. You can use paper, scrapbook paper, contact paper. I've seen people decoupage napkins. You can use fabric, burlap, wood, there are so many creative ways to cover these. So get into the aesthetic that matches you. Allow those creative juices to flow and customize a look that you love. Now, when it comes to painting, I know firsthand that cardboard paints extremely well. When my kids were super little, there was a store that we went to that had a ton of appliance boxes that they were throwing away. We threw them in our minivan, brought them home, and it was the perfect idea for me to launch into doing a carnival for my kid's first birthday party. Covering these with so much paper and glue and tape was going to be too much work, and I'm lazy at the core. You might think I'm super, super resourceful, but it comes from laziness. So I got some cheap, I think it was 99 cents a can from Walmart, the cheapest spray paint I could find, and I started spray painting. It took two to three coats, depending upon the type of ink that was printed on there, but they looked beautiful at the end. And then I was able to decorate with acrylic paint on top. This also led me into one of my first box costumes, which was Cougar Barbie. <laughs> By just spray painting the box pink and using my Cricut, I was able to create a really unique looking costume, which has also led to many other costumes I've made through the years for my kids. But by spray painting, you will get a really nice finish on them. Now, if you choose to paint it on there, go in lighter coats and you'll definitely need to do a lot more to get that even coverage. I recommend spray paint because it's just so easy and it doesn't cause any rippling. 
In the last video, I talked about my very first clutter challenge. So if you're interested in joining that, or if you have any questions, all of the information and details is in that video. So go ahead and check that out in the description below. But I am watching you guys and I am loving the enthusiasm. I'm also enjoying the support that you're getting from the community, but you guys are making some awesome progress. So I am super excited for you. If you're interested in joining this, you can still join. You have until April 4th. So don't worry about, I don't have time right now. There's plenty of time to still join in and it's only 10 days. I hope you liked some of these storage ideas today. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what other types of boxes you use or how you use them. I'm always blown away by the creativity that you have. So share those with me below. You can also share them on my Facebook page and that information is in the description below. The last two things I wanna say really quick before you click away is I am almost at 100,000 subscribers, which is mind blowing to me, but we just passed 82,000. And the reason I am so excited about this is yes, of course I wanna earn that plaque. It's been fun and it's what allowed me to come up with the challenge idea for you. But honestly, this channel started because I couldn't meet with all of my clients. There were a lot of people that just couldn't afford my services or they were out of my service area and I wanted a way to help them. And one click at a time, people have signed on. And there's a reason that this whole platform is called YouTube because it's all about you and I couldn't be here without you. So I wanna say a huge thank you. I'm so excited to hit that major milestone and I want to do a giveaway. So I'm trying to think of something super fun. I want to go live that day. So please continue sharing ideas on what you would like to see to celebrate this big day with me. A huge thanks to these lovely people who are supporting my channel and allowing me to make these videos. I am so appreciative to them and I'm appreciative to you for watching. I will see you in the next video in just a couple days. Bye.